Let's take a look at the very famous Millennium Villages project. The Millennium Villages project is a new and indeed unprecedented attempt to use foreign aid to jumpstart economic growth in a number of African villages. The idea is to do everything possible over a five-year period for these villages. This includes the distribution of fertilizer, the distribution of insecticide-treated bed nets, building schools, controlling HIV-AIDS, microfinance, installing electricity, building better roads, bringing in piped water, improving irrigation, increasing the rate of cell phone usage, and several other goals. It's a joint effort by Columbia University, Millennium Promise, and the United Nations. The project driver has been Jeffrey Sachs, who is one of the world's most famous economists. There are 13 basic clusters of Millennium Villages in Africa, and you can see them indicated on this map. Perhaps the best-known Millennium Village is in Saori, Kenya, and that's indicated here on this map. And by the way, here's a nice photo of Saori, Kenya. There are two related theories in development economics which motivate the project of the Millennium Villages. The first of these is called a poverty trap. It's the notion that a region or a city or a village can have so much severe poverty that the poverty itself hinders economic growth. This can be due to malnutrition because of bad diets. It can be due to bad health care. It can be due to individuals in poor regions simply being too stressed or somehow otherwise too overwhelmed. The belief is that it's necessary to break people out of this trap with one sudden jump start. This is sometimes called the big push forward. And the big push theory of economic development suggests that if a poor region can make significant advances along many fronts at once, that these advances will be self-reinforcing as a village or region becomes wealthier, people will take better care of themselves, people will have better health care, better education, and that this will feed into further prosperity. The idea, of course, is to get the Millennium Villages along this big push track and get them out of their poverty traps. To put this project in perspective, the outside aid is spending about $110 per capita per year. That's roughly equal to the basic size of these economies in the first place. So it's as if the outside aid is roughly doubling the amount of economic activity which is going down. What we find in the Millennium Villages, not surprisingly, is that yields are up, child mortality is down, schooling is up, cell phone ownership and usage is up, and bed net usage is up. To some extent, the aid is guided and directed, but you can also think of these as just some natural consequences of having greater prosperity and more economic activity in those villages. And putting economics aside, I would say that from a moral point of view, Jeff Sachs and his team should be congratulated for all of the individual human lives which have been improved by this project. But that said, we really don't know how effective the Millennium Villages project is as a systematic formula for administering economic aid. We don't know how well the project is doing compared to alternative possibilities, one of which would be simply giving the villagers more money. We also don't know how easily the project can be scaled, so it may work for 13 carefully selected clusters with experts sent to each one, but does that mean it can be a development strategy for an entire country or an entire continent? Again, we simply don't know. There are attempts to measure the progress in the Millennium Villages. For instance, there was a recent study of the Millennium Villages published in the journal Lancet, and this study estimated that per year there was a 7.8% decline in mortality for children under 5. Of course, that sounds like very good news. Yet it's not clear that's actually the correct estimate. Researcher Michael Clemens looked at those numbers more closely, and he estimated that the decline in mortality was somewhere between 1.4% and 14.3% per year, but we don't know where. Another researcher, Gabriel Demombines, looked at the data, and his estimate was the yearly rate of decline was 5.9%, not 7.8%. And furthermore, if you compared that to comparable villages, in the non-millennium village villages, the rate of mortality decline per year appeared to be 6.5%, and that would suggest that in the Millennium Villages, there was actually slower progress than in the villages you might compare them to. Sub-Saharan Africa during this period has made a lot of progress of its own accord. So we get back to this comparative question, 
compared to what? How well have the Millennium Villages done? And actually, we still don't know. There are some more general problems from trying to estimate the comparative gains from the Millennium Villages project. One issue is that it's the Millennium researchers themselves who are typically doing the evaluations within the Millennium Villages. The point is not to question their standards or their honesty, but rather keep in mind the incentives of the villagers themselves. The researchers in the village must rely to some extent on the villagers for assistance and also for data and information. Yet the villagers know that right now about half of the economic activity in their village is coming from the Millennium Villages Research Project. So the incentive of the villagers is to make the project look good and in essence tell or show the researchers what they are looking to hear. Another potential problem is that the Millennium Villages are to some extent pre-selected for the ease of working with them. These are villages which were interested in having outsiders come in and try to help them, and it could be that those villagers are either more open to the outside world or more mo motivated to have economic growth, or for some other reason they were already pre-slated to do better than a lot of comparison villages. Finally, ideally you would like the comparison villages to be selected at the very beginning of the Millennium Project and studied from the very beginning, but what's happening is that some of the evaluations are being constructed by looking back and we're trying to figure out what the comparison villages were doing several years ago rather than having set it up as a careful randomized control trial from the very beginning. So to reiterate a core point of this video, we definitely can see some happiness being brought to the world, but we still don't know in comparative terms how successful the project is or how scalable it might be. One warning note might be something called the Southwest Project, which was done in China. This was, this was a five-year foreign aid intervention, and the goal was to reverse the fortunes of poor villages by bringing them a package of better transportation, better water, more electricity, better schools, more health care, bring teachers to the village, have more microcredit, try to increase crop yields, and other noteworthy ideas. Since this project, these villages were studied. As you might expect, there were big gains at first in these villages. But the striking thing is, five years after the project was ended, those gains appear to have been completely gone. There were no lasting traces from the Southwest Project on the model villages in rural China. The point here is not to say that the Millennium Villages Project is exactly like the model villages in rural China. It's not. It's a different approach. But still, there are many attempts at foreign aid which in the short run, when the money is flowing, do bring gains, but they do not in the longer run bring sustainable economic growth. If you'd like to read more on that project in rural China, I recommend this piece, quote, Are There Lasting Impacts of Aid to Poorer Areas? And that is available online. We return to the core point that economic growth can be a process which is very difficult to manage from outside. There's a lot written on the Millennium Villages Project, but the best place to start is the website of the Millennium Villages Project itself. After that, for a variety of perspectives, you can Google Millennium Villages Review. Also, there are writings by Michael Clemens, which are worth reading, and Gabriel Demumbines, which tend to be more critical and stress the notion that we don't know how well the Millennium Villages Project is going. There's a good study, ODI Beyond the Village, which is online, and there's also a response from John MacArthur and Jeffrey Sachs, who work with the Millennium Villages Project. I would stress that new information and analysis is being produced on this topic all the time, so do not stop with these suggestions, but rather see what has come out most recently. And you can find that, of course, through Google and also news.google.com.